Do you want to one-shot your opponent before they can blink an eye? I mean, who wouldn't want to use just one button to decimate your enemy in a second? But maybe you prefer to rot your enemies doing unheatable damage to everyone on the enemy team. If this is what you want, then Warlock might be right for you. So stick around because we're gonna go over everything you need to know for setting up your lock in 9.1. And if you're looking for a one-stop shop to absolutely crush your opponents in this new season, look no further than Skill Cap. Over on our site, you'll find guides that perfectly follow up this entry-level guide, including our world-class courses that walk you through everything you need to know to bring your Warlock gameplay up to the level of a pro. There, you will find our current Affliction Warlock and upcoming Demonology Warlock course, showing you how to damage, CC, use cooldowns, and exactly how to execute your playstyle to a standard that only the world's best players understand. In addition, weekly releases of arena commentaries allow you to keep up with the ever-evolving meta and learn how to take down some of the most difficult matchups. And if that wasn't enough, skill-capped members get exclusive premium access to our Discord server, where you can question our team of pros with anything you need to know, all from as little as $4.99 a month. First off, let's quickly go over race. When playing Horde, Orc is the strongest choice by far. This is due to stun reduction from Hardiness being one of the best passive racials in the game, as well as having Blood Fury which is a nice damage amplifier that lines up with Dark Soul for dealing as much damage as possible. For Alliance, Human is definitely the most optimal. The Will to Survive racial allows you to break out of stuns and opens up the possibility to run Relentless Trinket, making you sit less CC overall. Gnome is a decent alternative to Human. Escape Artist removes all slows and roots, making it really strong for when kiting around pillars. It can also be comboed with Demonic Gateway to ensure melee won't catch up to you. And on top of all that, it doesn't share a cooldown with Medallion. And with that out of the way, let us go over which talents you should be running in PvP, starting off with Affliction. In the first row of talents, you will always be choosing Inevitable Demise. It offers a decent burst option, but the main reason for taking this talent is due to the other options being completely worthless. For the second row, it's highly recommended you play Absolute Corruption since Affliction Warlocks are heavily GCD starved. You can imagine, if you need to spend 3 globals per player every 20 seconds to keep dots up, you'll find yourself not having time to do anything else. In the third row, you need to run either Death Pact or Demon Skin. Death Pact is the better option versus comps that are cooldown dependent, such as Red Paladins with Avenging Wrath or Mages with Combustion. And Demon Skin sees more value when you're going to be taking constant damage, for instance when going against Feral Druids and BM Hunters. The fourth row is a no-brainer. Phantom Singularity will always be chosen here. It gives you the most utility and damage while also being extremely easy to use since it's instant cast unlike its competing talents. Just make sure you have it available whenever you want to use Summon Dark Glare. Fifth row is pure utility and Howl of Terror is easily the best one here. An instant AoE fear will allow you to either CC a healer or simply peel melee off you. It's an extremely flexible spell in that aspect. In the sixth row, Grimoire of Sacrifice is the best talent for pure damage output. Pets die extremely fast in the current meta and re-summoning them is a pain so removing that win condition from the enemy team is extremely valuable. In the 7th row, you pretty much always will be running Dark Soul Misery. If you combo this cooldown with Summon Dark Glare, Rapid Contagion, and Malefic Rapture Spam, your AoE DPS will go through the roof. However, if you happen to play against a team with a lot of the spells, Creeping Death is a decent alternative. Now, for Demonology, we want to run Demonic Strength in the first row simply because it gives us the most damage. This entire row is another DPS row, and whichever does the most damage is the one we pick. In the second row, Doom is usually preferred. However, as of making this video, the current meta revolves around setting up one-shots with Demon Bolts, making Power Siphon the best. In the third row, we usually take Demon Skin since we have a lot of consistent damage going out that will keep the shield nice and healthy. In the fourth row, we can decide between more consistent damage with Summon Vile Fiend and Soul Strike. However, since Demon Bolts is what we want to try to amplify as much as possible, From the Shadows is the best choice. In the fifth row, we usually run Mortal Coil since it can be used as a stun without sharing the R with other stuns, making it extremely strong for when we try to do our one-shot since the enemy will usually trinket our Felguard stun. Inner Demon is mandatory when you play Power Siphon since you need Wild Imps to sacrifice. And finally, in the last row, Sacrifice Soul gets chosen for the ultimate one-shot, increasing the damage by Demon Bolt by 50-80%. to 80%. We are playing PvP after all, so let's go over the PvP specific talents. Affliction Warlocks have two mandatory PvP talents, namely Rampant Afflictions and Rapid Contagion. Rampant Afflictions allow you to multi-dot with Unstable Affliction, giving you and your team dispel protection on your magical debuffs. This is especially strong when combined with a newly added Shackle Trinket or with Mind Games. If these are left up on the right target, it almost always ends in a kill. Rapid Contagion is a really strong off-script cooldown. When used, it will cause your opponents to take much more damage from your dot effects. Ideally, you'll want to be using this ability whenever you have all your dots spread on everyone. 
The third PvP talent will always be situational. Demon Armor is the best option whenever you're against physical damage. However, it's exclusive to Destro and Affliction. Having an increase in armor, especially after the armor nerf in 9.1, is absolutely massive. Nether Ward against casters is the strongest option for both Demo and Affliction, since you'll be able to make yourself immune and reflect CC as well as magical damage. It also makes you immune to magical interrupts. For Demonology, you have two mandatory PvP talents, namely Call Fell Hunter and Master Summoner. Call Fell Hunter is the only way for you to have a counter spell, which is super important. Range interrupts are some of the most overpowered spells to have in Arena. Master Summoner allows you to smoothen out your rotation. This is because you're going to want to be using Call Dreadstalkers off cooldown. If your opponent manages to consistently interrupt you when trying to cast this, then you'll be put behind dramatically. On the situational side of things, you have Nether Ward like mentioned earlier and Call Fell Lord which can be really strong versus double melee cleaves, since it can be used defensively and offensively. Whenever the enemy is doing their push, a well-placed Fell Lord can make it almost impossible for them to kill. Amplify Curse can be really good but has a high skill cap. Against teams with no curse to spell, an improved curse of tongue on a caster can be incredibly punishing. Against melee, improved exhaustion can really help you kite. And finally, as our final alternative option, Pleasure Through Pain can be selected for an additional 15% damage on your Demon Bolt. The extra damage is nice, but honestly, 9 times out of 10, it's gonna be overkill anyway, so you're better off picking utility. And now, let's go over how you should deal with Covenants, starting off with Affliction Warlock. The Covenants for Affliction Warlocks are really underwhelming. However, Night Fae is still the strongest one, mainly due to Soul Shape giving you better kiting options, and Soul Rot, which functions as a damage amplifier for your Malefic Rapture. You can also use Soul shape together with Demonic Circle and Gateway, giving you multiple options to kite your opponents. Crow Warlocks will often hold their defensive cooldowns against Cleaves and instead use the mobility of Soul Shape as a form of defensive CD. For Demonology, Necrolord is mandatory because of Decimating Bolt since it is your main source of burst. With this and the other amplifiers, you will be able to hit for 20k Demon Bolts. Hits nuts! As Affliction, after you've chosen Night Fae, it's time to choose the correct Soulbind. The best one without question is Karain. This is mainly due to Wild Hunt tactics which will give us everything we want in a Soulbind, increased damage when people are max HP to rot more efficiently as well as movement speed. We also get increased damage when it's time to close out games with Wild Hunt Stratagem. It essentially just buffs our damage whenever we deal damage to targets below 35%, helping us end games. Dreamweaver can be pretty good in some instances, like when you are playing with a Holy Paladin. This allows you to use a defensive strategy involving Pod Tender. Even if the seed procs, your Holy Paladin can use Hand of Sacrifice with the Ultimate Sacrifice Honor Talent to keep it alive long enough for you to resurrect. This is a decent strategy, but admittedly less reliable than simply playing Karain. When playing Demonology and Necrolord, the Soulbind is not too important. We recommend Plague Divisor Marilith for Ooze's frictionless coating, making you a tad more tanky. It's not great or as impressive as the Night Face Soulbinds for Affliction, but it's still the best. And finally, let's finish the Covenant with some conduits, starting off with Affliction Warlock. For the potency slots, we have Corrupting Leer, a great conduit that slowly reduces the cooldown of our strongest offensive ability, Summon Dark Glare. Next one is Rolling Agony, which essentially gives you more GCDs available to you by increasing the duration and agony and thus requiring less globals to keep it up on everybody. Affliction locks are already GCD starved as is, so you should look to free more globals up for yourself with your build. And finally, in the last potency slot, we have Soul Eater. We take this as mainly for the increased radius on Soul Rot, which makes it easier for us to hit multiple targets. This is important because you can combo it with 50 stacks of Inevitable Demise, allowing you to deal massive AoE burst damage and healing. And since you'll be running the Endurance Conduit Accrued Vitality, you'll be left with an absolutely massive hot on yourself after the combo. The final Endurance Conduit you should be running is Resolute Barrier. You'll mainly be running this conduit over the alternative finesse conduit demonic momentum whenever you think you're gonna be the target and if you think you won't be able to kite the damage. And the final finesse conduit is Shade of Terror which is pretty mandatory since you'll likely be spreading your dots to everyone thus making your fear susceptible to breaking to damage. And for demonology, we will start out with potency as well. We want Fel Commando not necessarily for the damage increase but for the damage taken decrease. Having your pet die in PvP situations is a huge lose condition, so making it tankier is very valuable. Born of Blood gives us free demonic core procs which we use to generate soul shards for our big ramp damage. Tyrant's Soul is another nice source of demonic cores and allows you to deal more pressure even after your tyrant has despawned. For the Endurance Conduit, Resolute Barrier works as a cooldown reduction for your wall and makes it impossible for the enemy team to track the cooldown of your biggest defensive, which can cause the enemy team to make bad targeting decisions. 
Condensed Animosphere, a new addition to 9.1, might look weak, but it'll do a lot of healing throughout a full game. Don't sleep on this one. And finally, your single finesse conduit fell celerity. If your pet dies and you're unable to get it back out, you will be in a losing position. Therefore, it's important that fell domination isn't on cooldown if our pet dies. Thus, having some cooldown reduction on it helps a great deal. Next up, let's talk about gear. There are multiple options for gear with a bunch of different stat combinations. So how do you know which one is right for you? We use a term called stat priority, which basically means we prioritize items based on stats. For both demo and affliction warlocks, the stat priority is intellect then versatility and haste, then mastery, and finally crit. You should aim for around 25% haste since you'll otherwise find yourself GCD starved. The new patch saw quite a few changes to gearing, most notably item scaling for PvP and domination sockets for PvE. All gear purchased with conquest points will now scale up 13 item levels, making it far superior to most PvE gear. Within Sanctum of Domination, you'll now be able to get items with domination sockets for new gems called Shards of Domination. These gems are nerfed by 50% in PvP, so they aren't completely necessary in Arena. If you manage to get your hands on a piece with a domination socket, just make sure it has versatility on it. Otherwise, your conquest PvP gear is probably better. But don't sweat it, this gear is completely optional. It only increases your overall DPS by decimals. When it comes to enchanting and gemming your gear, simply just follow the stat priority list and make sure you get the Celestial Guidance weapon enchant. And finally for legendaries, it's highly recommended you get your hands on the Sacrilash's Dark Strike for Affliction, since it frees up some of your globals by refreshing your curses on targets with corruption. Shard of Annihilation for Demonology is an absolute must, since with this we can now guarantee our Demon Bolt crits, which can cause some insane burst. Both are absolutely mandatory to make your win condition a reality. All good things must come to an end, but before you go, make sure these macros are in your toolkit, starting things off with Arena 1, 2, and 3 macros. These are extremely useful for CCing the enemy team without having to target anyone, and to make the macro, simply put an Arena 1, 2, or 3 condition in your cast. For efficient keybinds, it's highly recommended to add modifier conditions to your Arena 1, 2, 3 macros. In this example, the macro will cast fear if no modifier is being pressed. But if shift is being held down, then it'll cast fear on arena 1. And finally, if control is being held down, then it'll cast fear on arena 2. And for the ultimate fluidity in our gameplay, we can add slash CQS at the top of our macros. CQS stands for cancel queued spell and will do just that. This way, you will never be hindered in casting fear due to a different spell being queued up. This occurs quite often if you are a player with high ping. And finally, to take advantage of the focus frame, we use focus conditions in our macros just like with Arena 123. In this example, our Warlock casts Fear on the Shaman while having the Paladin targeted because he had the Shaman focused. To do this, we just replace the Arena 123 with focus. If you want to keep using modifiers to save keybind space, we can easily do that. In this example, the macro will now cast Fear on the focus if shift is being pressed. Otherwise, Fear will be cast on the target. And before you go, make sure you have these pet macros keybound so you can manage your pet as effectively as possible. Slash pet attack is an important one that simply causes your pet to attack your target. If you use this combined with pet follow, you'll be able to make your pet insanely hard for the enemy team to kill. And that rounds up the demo and affliction warlock guide. Be sure to check out skillcap.com slash wow where we have been busy updating our class courses and arena commentaries for season 2. As always though, thanks for watching. See you soon!